everybody, it's a fresh pleasure to move right into Hana El Samad's Living Histories talk. I'm dying to hear this talk, as I know you are. So without further ado, take it away, Hana. Please tell us about Living Histories in UCSF, in Altos, and in many other places. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be, to be here. So I'm going to start my talk with this uh, quote from Mark Twain that says that actually, you know, you can read it, but what it says is who we are and how we think is a collection of ideas, of old ideas that we combine in different, in different ways. And the way we come across these ideas is through the people we encounter and in our lives and we discuss with. So, uh, you know, I know this is living history of one person, but but my history is so intertwined with every student, every postdoc, every mentor, every, every advisor, every scientist I met in a meeting. Um, all of their ideas come together and, and, you know, get synthesized in new ways and make me who I am. And that's a, a really sincere statement. That's how, that's how we, you know, that's how the world of science works. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I am, I was born and raised in Lebanon in the Middle East. I was born the first year the civil war started in Lebanon. So I spent the first 18 years of my life in the middle of a civil war. That was really tough. Um, I went to college at the American University of Beirut, which is a liberal arts college uh, in, in, in Beirut, Lebanon, where I studied electrical engineering. And I, this is where I was exposed to the idea of feedback control systems and dynamical systems. And I was, uh, you know, having grown in a, in, a, in a very chaotic, actually, world where people and events and circumstances were so out of control and there were no corrective action. The idea that you can actually build robust systems that self-correct through feedback control was just to give you order and robustness was just a revolutionary idea to my young mind. So this is why I decided to study. And then I came to the US to study that. And that's a young me in 1998, hugging my robot, which was my uh, senior uh, thesis work. Now, uh, I landed in Iowa State University where I did my undergrad, uh, my um, master's degree with Mustafa Kamash, who is one of the best advisors one could wish for. Uh, he, uh, you know, uh, him and I started thinking about together about, okay, what else other than robotics and flight controllers and self-driving cars and, you know, and this and that we could apply our control and feedback systems expertise in. And the idea was, um, you know, uh, bi biology, but that was such a, you know, a, a new idea at the time around 1999. Um, then uh, Mustafa moved to UCSB to be a you know, professor there, and uh, he took me with him. And along the way, we actually, he did a sabbatical at Caltech, and he also took me with him on a sabbatical, which is, which is interesting. I mean, you usually don't take your students with you on a sabbatical, but Mustafa thought that was an opportunity for me since I was interested in biology, and at the time, Caltech was, was kind of one of the epicenters of systems biology and synthetic biology around the year 2000, he thought I would greatly benefit from that. And that was absolutely the case because after that, I was just hooked on studying biology from a controlled perspective. Uh, following my PhD in 2005, I actually did turn down a few faculty position in engineering department and went as a non-tenure faculty, uh, what's called a Sandler fellow to UCSF which is UCSF for those of you know of you who, who know is a just a med actually it's a medical nursing and pharmacy school doesn't have engineering doesn't have math doesn't have physics um, and people thought that was a very bizarre choice on my on my behalf to 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 just you know kind of go from um, you know, engineering department, my PhD was in mechanical engineering into a medical school, but that was in retrospect, the best thing uh, I could have done for my career because I took a very deep dive into um, what really matters, what doesn't matter, what questions to ask. I learned biology um, by, by just observing, you know, every day uh, molecular biologists and, 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 and physiologists and all of these people who are actually going around curing, you know, and, and, and doing medicine. I, I learned biology in the, you know, in a, in a very pragmatic and in a very actionable way. And here's me 
now hugging a cell instead of hugging a robot at around you know 2008. Um, after that, I moved into the faculty at UCSF, where I still am a faculty. But uh, you know, as you see, I, I every few years I take jumps. And there are very unpredictable kind of bifurcation points. So the other bifurcation point happened in 2022, where I decided to be one of the founders um, and, and most recently a senior vice president and director of integration and innovation at Altus Labs, which is a, which is a new uh, you know, biotech company. It's a research and development company that takes the long view on, on, on research and, uh, you know, and, and development. And maybe if I have the time, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but that's, that's where I am right now. Um, okay, so uh, here's, here's why, why am I fascinated with feedback control and feedback loops? Uh, I think this quote says it all. I think one can imagine life with different chemistry, but you know, um, life on earth, but can you imagine um, any existence for us or for the ecosystems around us if we didn't have the ability to learn, to observe, to self-correct, I think that would be difficult. We couldn't walk, we couldn't see, we couldn't, you know, it's, it's just, it's, we, we have no other solution to living in an uncertain environment at every level of organization, but to use correcting, corrective mechanisms, to be aware of our environment, compute and correct to the circumstances of it. Uh, so of course, this is, this is, uh, this is this is the fact at every scale within cells among cells and among organs, and um, one of my one of the things I do, you know, since we're talking about ourselves, one of, one of the things I do when I, you know, when I um, the the world is is in chaos is actually right. So one of my pandemic uh, pieces was uh, a retrospective, you know, historic analysis and a projection into the future of what biological feedback control can do. So in my group, we study uh, feedback control networks. We ask, can we understand them? Can we fix them? Can we build them? And uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you that we actually, um, you know, study all of these aspects. And through the years, we studied the role of feedback in many systems. Uh, we also uh, d develop technologies that would allow us to fix feedback control system when they, when they fail. And most recently, uh, we actually built feedback control systems, and um, and it was uh, you know we we built them in collaboration with David Baker and with De Novo Design Protein. So that was an example where we jumped from systems biology into synthetic biology, and also jumped into the deep end. You can see the theme here. We jump into the deep end of things where we build these feedback control systems, even with designer proteins, not with naturally occurring proteins. But this is all published, and people can read about this. The reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is you know, to show you how starting from trying to understand the world, um, sometimes that leads you to, how can I fix the world, right? And, and this was our transition from systems biology to synthetic biology. And um, more recently into actually therapeutic applications of synthetic biology through the field uh, of uh, cell cell based therapies, um, which uh, which I I truly believe is the new wave of medicine. We went from drugs to biologics, and now to that are inert, you know, basically molecules, to the idea that we can use cells as tiny therapeutic robots that could be programmed to influence. Um, to, 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 to influence health uh, in, a, in a living organism. Uh, so this is actually the point at which where, you know, I decided to join the Altos Labs uh, kind of train and, and, and move there to be one of the founding principal investigators. And, and there we want to actually take uh, cell-based therapy to the next futuristic state of that, which is can we, instead of taking cells outside of the body, programming them and putting them back in, which is what, you know, these, uh, you know, new current waves of therapies are, can we actually do the programming uh, of cells inside a living organism without taking them out? Um, so uh, um, just, just a couple of words before I end on this, and I'm going to end on a very different note, on an activism note, because I'm also an activist about um, Altus Labs. Um, is that we're, we're trying to understand what a healthy cell, what a healthy organism means with the goal of trying from different angles, with the goal of trying to uh, reprogram that 
uh, in in a living organism uh, from 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 frailty or disease into health in a very very general setting. Um, so uh, I uh, you know I, I hope to convey to you that uh, I I enjoyed the journey more than the than the destination. I tremendously enjoy the journey. Uh, uh, I try I I like to take risks and jump at the deep end of the pool. Uh, most of often I jump into the pool in which I don't know how to swim, but that's fine. I use floaties and I ask questions, even if that reveals my ignorance. Uh, I, I insist on knowing what I don't know. And I try to speak up about what needs to be fixed. And I'll, I'll just say that and, 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 and then end because I'm out of time. Um, I said that I like writing. I write a lot about, you know, I, I like writing paper. I like writing reviews, but I also like to write about things that need to be fixed in our country and our in our uh, scientific ecosystem and, and, and beyond. And these are a few of my writings. Uh, I wanna end on this last one that uh, my last, latest editorial that appeared today, which I would really like to advocate for all of us to think about, which is that um, science and the trust of the public in science is in a deep state of crisis. Um, even in the last year, we lost so much confidence, public confidence in science. And, uh, you know, that's due to a lot of, and this is, you know, the, that Pew uh, research uh, shows you actually the actual numbers. They're pretty staggering how much we lost in the last year in terms of public confidence in science and scientists. Uh, there are many reasons to that. One of the biggest reasons is misinformation. The fact that some of us are not speaking up, they're not, we're not explaining our position. And I would like to leave you with this. We uh, we have to fight this. We have no other choice. We should all be ambassadors and defenders of science, and we have to not only train our students to be competent at evaluating scientific evidence and believing you know truth and facts, but we have to go out of that comfort zone and talk to the public. We have to educate our friends, our families, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> bystanders on the street. We, we have to do that, we have no other choice. So I hope that message resonates. Okay, so thank you very much. Get in touch with me if you'd like to discuss some of these topics a little, you know, more, here's my coordinates. And thank you very much for listening. I apologize for being a few minutes over my allocated time. Uh, thank you so much, Han Hannah, you're within time. And uh, on behalf of the audience, many, many thanks. Um, I. We'll start with a question since we have a shy audience, um, which is appealing to your activist self. Um, you mentioned intertwined trajectories where others have fed into your uh, growth and development as much as you have in this, but I wonder about institutions because you've also gone through a few institutions. Uh, is the generosity reciprocal there? Do you feel like you have gotten as much as you have given in each of the places you've traversed. How do you how do you manage your activism in a way in which you don't burn out? Yes, uh, I mean I've been very lucky in my trajectory of the people I've encountered, um, and I've received a lot of generosity in return. But this is not to say that others are not receiving the same generosity in return. So uh, this shouldn't be you know, about me and what I received, this is, we should look at, you know, the collective of us, all of us, and whether we're receiving the same generosity or not. And I would say that we're, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know, and this is not an opinion, this is of course data, that some of us are not receiving the same generosity. And that's a systemic failure of our institutions. But the good news is that institutions are made of people and people can affect change. Um, and I believe that change is coming. It's underway. We just have to be very diligent about it. Thank you so much. Um, I will take a burning question from Shankar uh, Suraj very quickly. Um, who wants to hear about your transition to Altos? What aspects of this change do you like? Uh, and so on. Yeah, so <laughs> I can talk about that for hours because it's a, it's a it's a big transition. I mean, I still do have my lab at UCSF, and we're still you know cranking and and going strong. But the transition to Altos has been um, 
invigorating in so many ways. Uh, one of the things that I realized, of course, we all had, you know, our soul searching during the pandemic. Mine was about uh, what what impact do I have? Am I going to have on the on the world? And am I uh, am I happy by just uh, you know, publishing papers, which is great, and, 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 and doing basic science. And I realized, and that's a very personal choice, that I would like to try to move closer to uh, the deliverables of science. I, I, I don't want to become, you know, a, um, a, a translational person necessarily, but I want to, you know, bridge, to learn how to bridge that gap and bring our science a little bit closer while still doing the basic and fundamental science. And that has been, you know, amazing. Uh, you know, the realization that one can do that has been amazing transitioning into Altus Lab. The other thing is I love teamwork. I love teamwork. And we do a lot of teamwork in academia, but the reward system is very individual, right? Um, and I wanted to see whether in, in this new, uh, you know, kind of uh, beast that is this new invention that is Altus Labs, which is, we, we, all, we always say, we're going to make it the best of academia and industry, where we can, can we change a little bit, can we build a value system that truly values teams and the contributions of people in a team rather than individual contributions. We'll see if we'll be able to do that. But that 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 also, that change of culture was very invigorating for me. I, I can go on, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, well, uh, that was a wonderful preview and thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm closing- Thank you.